is exceedingly good, and we are so glad you joined us for Unscripted Faith. I am Angela Madden. I'm here with Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. You know what? I am really excited because today is going to be a great day. We've got Dr. Ray Heipel. He's going to be sharing his story, how he went from partying to now pastoring. And he's going to be sticking around for a second part of our show. We're going to have a theological debate, Angela, oh, discussing <laughs> the end times. We yes. Listen, you ain't going to want to miss this. <laughs> he's got so much to share, and it's going to be great. And he went, like I said, from partying and running from the police to pastoring, and he's also a Cornerstone television host. Y'all are going to know exactly who he is. Let's go over to set, and let's meet him right now. Oh. We are so glad. Yes. <laughs> hey, great, to, great to be on your show, man. So glad Mr. to have Mr. you. Mr. Origin. <laughs> Good to be with you, man. Good to be with you guys. So glad to have Welcome you. Welcome to Unscripted Faith. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thank you. We are excited to have you. Well, I'm glad to be here. Listen, doctor. 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 Oh, sorry. Yes, doctor. Yes, pastor. Doctor. Ray. Yeah. I make my wife use all those titles at home. So. <laughs> of course well, she I hope everybody knows that your wife is the uh, executive producer. Yeah. She's yes. out there somewhere. She's out the there. Yes. So you can't act up today. Yes. Yeah. I, I know, she I know. will take you to the woodshed. I'll need, I'll need a ride home, Jay, maybe. <laughs> you can help me out. For sure. Well, Dr. Ray, tell us a little bit, because I, yeah. got, I get to watch you guys on hard questions. You know, y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. got it all together, doctor, <laughs> professional, you know, deep, all the deep questions getting yeah, answered yeah. by you all. But it wasn't always like that. So no. can you share with us so we can get a glimpse into what your story has been before Jesus and where you are now? Yeah, um, you know, I grew up in western Pennsylvania, small town America. And, uh, you know, I respected my parents. It's the, I was a kid in the 1970s, a teenager in the 1980s. And so most people went to church. Most people were good people, you know, and, and, um, and that was just a part of life then. It's a lot different than it is now. I mean, if you were going to maybe get serious in your life, people would say, oh, he, you know, he found God, he found religion. And that was a good thing. Nowadays, you know, that's kind of a bad thing. Oh, you must be a hater because you like, you know, you're a believer in Jesus, but totally different culture. So I knew that this was right, and I believed it in my head, right? And I was serving in the church as an acolyte, which is kind of like a Lutheran altar boy, you know, lighting the candles with the little robe. And <laughs> so I had to go to church, and I had to hear, you know, the scriptures. And so I would hear the Bible. We had a very heavy liturgy, like the Catholic Church, so there's a lot of scripture being read, and there's a lot of prayers being offered, and you do that every week. So, like, I knew the Apostles' Creed by heart, the Lord's Prayer, a lot of things like that. So I knew Jesus is the Son of God. And I knew that if you didn't, you know, believe in him in some sense, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. But I also knew as I got older that um, I wasn't living for him. And I became more and more convicted that if I died, I would go to hell. Because you have, I, I just sort of intuitively understood that if he's not your Lord, he can't be your savior. If you're not living by his word, mm -hmm. then, you know, he can't save you. He, he won't save you. It's like a king. You know, Jesus is a king and he saves everyone in his kingdom. But if you're outside the kingdom and you're an enemy... Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, his salvation's not for you. And, and now he offers it to you. Come yes. to me and, and you'll be saved. All, all who hear. But I, I, I wanted to have fun. And I remember saying this to a girl one time. She's witnessing to me outside and I was in college. And, and I knew what she was saying was right. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I'll do that when I get old, just before I die, you know. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll come to Christ <laughs> because I want to drink and I want to party and I want to chase girls and I want to, you know, run around and... Uh, be in the cool group and, and do all that stuff. And I started to do that more and more, especially as I got out of high school, you know, my senior year and then out of high school into college and thinking that, you know, I can come to Christ just before I die. And, and you know, the Lord had other plans. Wow. So, wow. So what happened? Uh, there had to be a turning point. So you're partying, you're drinking, yeah. you're hanging out, you're doing all these types of things. Yeah. Uh, but there were some serious events that took place that were kind of yeah. aided in the turning point of your faith. Yeah, I was getting in trouble with the law a little bit. We'd get pulled over by the cops because we were running around drinking and doing things we shouldn't have been doing. And, you know, it, we, they let you go sometimes, but sometimes you don't. So I got a, arrested for underage drinking and then I got arrested for underage drinking again. And then a third time I got arrested, wow. could have been seven or eight, but sometimes <laughs> they let you go, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but each time the law had changed, so it was always like I was a first-time offender. So I'd just have to take classes or lose my license for a bit or something. And, you know, I'm 17, 18, maybe 20 the last time. And, uh, and, and, and also becoming more convicted, you know. Wow. Like a friend of mine was killed in an accident 
and I had learned about that when I was on spring break down in Daytona Beach, you know, Penn State, big party bus. I mean, just it was just a wild, nonstop party. I get back, and, and my dad, who was trying to call me back to, to my senses, said, one of your friends is dead. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, which one? And I remember praying that night to receive Jesus into my heart. Wow. But it wasn't real. It was, again, wow. I, I was trying to do things to make myself believe that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I, I carried this cross in my pocket and had this words. I carried this cross in my pocket because Jesus is my Savior and Lord. And if I die, I'll go to heaven. And, and I knew it wasn't true again because he, I wasn't wow. living for him. So I was trying all these things. I'd touch the fence post when I went out at night because we would do crazy stuff. And I'd think to myself, if, if I touch the fence post, I'll, I'll be alive tonight to come back and touch it again. I mean, just weird, superstitious wow. stuff. And that was the first wow. accident. But yeah. tell us about the accident you were in. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just typical night. We were running around. Uh, the police were looking for us because of something that we did. And, um, and I wanted to go home. I'm like, no, we're, we're done. And, um, and we got in an argument of good, you know, my time, my best friend. You know, we always went out and ran around. I was 20. He was 21. And um, we ended up going off the road. And, um, and we hit a culvert that we didn't see, and it ripped the underside of the car off, and, and then we were going towards a tree. And I remember feeling like, you know, we'll bounce off, but, and then everything went black. And then I woke up in a field, because we both went through the windshield. My car was totaled, but I, di I didn't know it. My first thought was, we're in somebody's yard. We gotta get out of here before the police come. I mean, that was always my thought. You know, the, you know it's always about the police and looking good and, and being a good person. And so, um, and then I went around the front of the car and I saw my friend in the grass. I knew he was dead as soon as I saw him just because his face was straight in the grass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just fell down on my knees and I grabbed his hand and I started crying out to Jesus. And, you know, God, please let him live. Please let him live. Knowing that God could, but also feeling as much as I've ever felt anything that God would not listen to me because I had chosen to live without him. You know, and there's a verse that says, you know, God's arm is not too short that he cannot save, or his ear is not too dull that he cannot hear, but your sins have made a separation between you and your God so that he will not hear. And I, I experienced that that night. God would not hear because I said, I'm not going to, I don't want God. And, uh, and it was in the hospital later on that I gave my life to him and I said, I want to die. And I felt like I could kill myself in the hospital. I could run through the window. We were w way high up. And, um, and then I just thought, Lord, I don't know what it means, but I really want to live for you now. I, I don't want to just get out of hell. Wow. I want to live for you. And that began my life. And I just started reading the Bible. I didn't know what else to do. I read it cover to cover and then read it cover to cover again. And uh, just started to do these things that I think the Lord was using to prepare me to be a pastor eventually. Because, yes. you know, when I finally went to seminary part time, just because I wanted to study more, had no intention of being a pastor. I took the entrance exam Bible test, 150 questions. All these guys... Bible majors in college, going to be a pastor. I got the highest grade. The, the registrar came up to me and said, you got the highest grade on the Bible exam. And I had no intention of being a minister. You know, I just, I just read the Bible all the time. And so, you know, God was using those things. And, and he used, you know, even, even my accident. You know, I, I like to preach at my church. You know, the verse, all, all things work together for all good. Things, you know, right. Romans yeah. eight twenty eight. To those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And, and we know that's true, but, you know, that means that God is going to, uh, he, he, is, he is over your sins, He is overruling them, and He's going to use them in your life. Yes. You know, I wish I would have come early. I wish I would have come to Christ when that girl told me to, yes. but it took more than that for me. You know, sometimes the shepherd's got to break the leg of the lamb to bring yeah. him back to the flock. Yeah. Some of us need to be hit a little harder on the head. And, and, the, and the scary thing is, you know, I think there's a point when, at which God's going to stop, you know. You come to one of these places in your life and the, you come to the crossroads. And, and I think, you know, God, if you go the wrong way, there may not be another one. You know, yeah. you can't presume. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, That's God's, so true. you know, at some point, you know, God's great uh, grace is great. His long suffering, his patience is incredibly long. But there's a point at which judgment will fall. You know, today's the day of salvation. Come to Christ today. You don't know if you'll get another chance. That was the big lie. I thought I would come to Christ before. I, I think if I would have hardened my heart there, I wouldn't have wanted to before I died. You know, Satan wow. would have deceived me. Wow. So, well, we've got like about a minute and a half here, and I uh, wanted to ask you, how did you end up at Cornerstone Television? If you can give us the abbreviated version of that, because well, this is where yeah, you met your wife as I well, did. right? I met my wife right in this studio. The executive the, like, producer. Right over there. Um, 
Yeah, it was uh, 1992, and I'm looking for, you know, I saw these people on Cornerstone Television. I knew they lived for the Lord. I knew the Bible was real to them. That's what I wanted. I didn't see that anywhere else in the mainline churches. And so um, I applied to Cornerstone Television, and uh, it was an interesting story about how my, my uh, resume was spotted because I was from Salzburg, and somebody hunted there, and, you know, and, and they took it to the, and, and otherwise I would have probably stayed in the pile, and and so I get a tour of the station, you know, the first day, my, my second interview, I think, first one over the phone. And, and uh, Larry James, you know, one of the main uh, guys here, does everything. Uh, was taking me through the studio, and, and this woman, Robin, girl, uh, Robin Helmstetter, was walking through. And I noticed right away, oh, cute girl, you know, I have to keep that in the back of my mind. <laughs> now, you notice the cute girl. Yeah. And as we're walking past each other, right? Um, she has all these pots of, of, of coffee that, you know, there was water in them from her set, his place, you know, because it was a restaurant. And soon, you know, our eyes meet and I say hi to her and, and we pass each other. And as soon as she gets past me, you hear, she dropped all of those coffee pots. <laughs> the Lord so like struck her with like love at first sight that she just <laughs> lost her, her ability to carry her. I'm going to need that ride home, I think, a little bit later, Joe. But, but that, yeah, so I, so I started working here and a wow. cameraman, uh, then I was assistant director up in the control room and then still read my Bible and stuff. And, and eventually um, people saying, you ought to take classes at a seminary. You know, you want to, I said, oh, I can do that. I never thought I could do that. Yeah. So that's when I just started doing that again, just because I wanted to know God more through his word. Well, you know, Tamayi, wow. you've gone to seminary, and uh, you and I have been on the set of hard yes, questions yes, several yes. times, and uh, your testimony is outstanding, but one thing that's always intrigued me is your knowledge of the Word. Mm. But there are some things that we are about to discuss that might seem a little different from one another that you're going to want to stick around for, but before we go to that, we have a spirit walk with Tom. Check it out, and I'll be right back here with Dr. Ray Heupel. Well, the last time we were together, we talked about a miracle that happened. You remember Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, and uh, someone was begging alms of them, and Peter, he spoke the word of God, and the man was miraculously healed, and he went around praising God. And you know what was interesting about that? Something even better than him being healed began to happen. People began to notice. You say, is that better? Well, let me tell you a little story and tell you why it's better. Last time I also mentioned that I had prayed and my wife had prayed with a man that lived next door to us and uh, he had seen his knee healed and even said, told us later when he was up on the ladder, hey, my knee feels great. Anyway, that opened the door for later on down the line Actually, as he was getting close to the end of his life, I had the opportunity to pray with him to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. What a fantastic story. That is even better than the healing. That is the ultimate healing. That is better than a sign, better than a wonder, better than anything, is that it opens the door for the gospel. Now, everybody saw this. Listen, listen to what it, uh, it says. This is after the healing in Acts chapter three. In verse nine, it says, and the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. See, the, the miracles are really, as much as God loves to do them, they're really for something else. They're to open the door to the gospel in someone's life. Someone could be hard. I'm sure you've shared the love of God with someone and they've been hard. They've been closed off. They, they didn't want to receive it. Well, God can begin to open someone's heart by them seeing one of those miracles. So let's expect that. Maybe you're, it's someone you work with, a coworker you've been wanting to talk to for a long time, and you say, uh, I'll pray for you when he shares something that's uh, you know, bothering him, maybe with his family, maybe in his physical body. Or maybe it's somebody at a coffee shop like this, where you just run into somebody and you start talking to them. And, you have the opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ. And maybe they don't want to hear it, but if a miracle happens, if something with power, with signs, with wonders happens, then God begins to open their door. Listen, everybody's got a key. There's a key to everybody's heart. And God knows what that key is. And he uses us as the instruments to bring that love of God and that miracle working power to him. So God has that for you today, wherever you are. You know what happened with when Peter preached? 5,000 people came to the Lord that day. 5,000. Just a little bit before, 3,000 had come. So now there's 8,000 people in the church, a brand new church. 
I'm sure that was a bit of a problem, but it was also a wonderful problem to have. The 8,000 new believers and miracles and the power of the Holy Spirit were the things that began to open those doors that people's lives can be changed. God wants to work the same way right now. He wants miracles make room for God's love in people's hearts. So let's be those miracle working agents as we're walking out at the coffee shop or at the supermarket or maybe even in church, wherever we happen to be at our place of employment, wherever that is, let's be those who bring the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit in our spirit walk that day. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. We're here with Dr. Ray Hypo, and as you just saw, we have uh, Tom Hollis that was on there doing the Spirit Walk, talking about salvation. You know, Dr. Ray, you and I are very good friends. You're my brother from another mother. Absolutely. Right. Oh, I mean, I love you. I, love I mean, you you're too. such a great man, and <clears throat> so appreciate you. Uh, but the reality is, we don't agree on everything. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm working on you. You're going to come along eventually. <laughs> we're trying to get there. We, <laughs> we, we see Tom on there. We go back. For, I love it when we're on hard questions. We get a chance to yes. discuss some of these things. And, uh, you know, I believe in being a first round draft pick. I believe that the rapture is coming. I believe that Jesus <laughs> is coming very soon and that we yes. are a pre trip person. Yeah. But my question to you is why do you not believe? Uh, what we believe. Yeah, I, I wish, you know, it's one of those things I, I like to say I'm a millennial, but I hope, you know, maybe one of the other views is, is right because I'd rather just get <laughs> out of I don't want to go quick. through all that stuff. Well, and of course, it comes down to, you know, what do we believe the Bible says, you know, because right. we both go by the Bible. We're not exactly. going by like feelings or what, you know, some other religion says. And so, you know, I look at the, um, I look at the scriptures and I do believe in a rapture if what we're talking about is the dead in Christ rising. And then go, those of us meeting him in the air, I think scripture clearly says that. But, you know, um, way back when um, I worked as a cameraman here, Russ Spixler was the president of the uh, station and uh, the founder. And, and he believed in um, a, a book that I think Marvin Rosenthal wrote. And it was called The, the uh, Pre-Wrath Rapture of the Church. And, and it made the argument that it's not until God is about to pour his judgment out that the church will be raptured. And so, you know, my view would be that as Christ is coming down with his army to destroy the wicked, we'll meet him in the air, we'll, we'll, we'll enter into the train, and then it'll continue to come down. So I don't believe in like a seven-year period or anything. And, and, uh, and I, again, because I think, you know, Jesus says like, you know, as, as it was in the days of Noah, the day Noah entered the ark, the floods came. Or as it was in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, the day Lot left the city, the fire fell. So I think the day God pulls his people out, the wrath will come. He's not going to let Satan have his way for seven, seven years or whatever. So see, now I believe that with the rapture, it says in Thessalonians that we are called to escape that wrath that's mm -hmm. coming. So you don't believe the wrath happens before this seven years of tribulation. You think we're in it right now? Well, no. Uh, I mean, I, I think we're in the last days. Yep. I think Acts says, you know, in these last days, uh, um, and it you know, uses Ela, uh, these. Um, so I think the last day started, the last phase of God's plan started when Christ sat down on the right hand of, of, of God. He's, he's sitting there. He rules over all things. And, uh, and, and because it's not time for him to come back yet, um, we, we have to face, you know, um, persecution. And so I do think the church will face persecution. And I think it, there will be a, a, a concentrated time of the end. Not everyone in my tradition would believe that, but I do believe before Christ comes, um, that there's going to be a great persecution. And I believe as there are types of Antichrist, I think there's going to be a final, like a fulfillment. And types of beasts, I think, there, again, there's going to be yeah. a final. And so, like, the church is going to be, I think, severely persecuted at the time of the end. I, I think of the passage um, um, where Jesus says, you know, but when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? I think mm -hmm. there's going to be a massive falling away. I think there's going to be a, 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 the, the love of many growing cold. And, and don't I, you think we're seeing all that right now? I mean, look at some yeah. of the preachers we're seeing, the yeah. falling away, yeah. people that are denying the faith. Mm. We see people in church compromising yeah. in your denomination and oh, my, my non-denom. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we're seeing all yeah. these different types of things Calling happening. Calling good evil and evil good. I mean, certain uh, kinds of sex that the Bible, even man's own nature knows is wrong. We're, we're celebrating now. Um, yeah, I... I uh, I don't know. I guess the, the short question answer well, that would be. one of us is going to be yeah. right, and I hope yeah. I'm the one that's right, but I, I understand your stances on it as yeah. well. I think, you know, clearly every day we get closer because there is a time when he's coming. You know, this, right. it's not right. just going to go on forever. So it is getting closer. What I couldn't do is say to you, you know, I mean, it, it, 
I agree. It looks like things are coming to a head. It's global now. It's never been that way. You know, this country would be doing something, but some other country, you know, God would work and there would be a revival and then things would shift around. And, but with it being global and everything being instant, I mean, it, you know, and, and it certainly seems like this could be, but I well, don't want to make that call because I don't know. And of course, I mean, we're all taking a best guess on yeah. this because there's so many different things. I wish I had more time. I'd go into about the Daniel 70 weeks. Because yeah, I'd be curious yes, to yes, know, yes. okay, we have the 69 weeks that happened. Yeah. I believe that that paused the moment that Jesus showed up uh, and said, I, how would I love to have gathered you? And they missed their appearing. Yeah. And those seven years are that God's determined dealing with Israel during that time, which will start at the point, which is why I believe we're seeing all the attention in the Middle East at this time. Every Everything's focused in on Israel yeah. because Israel is God's time clock, mm. which I know we don't have time to go into yeah, all this yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, we'll yeah. Have, well, Lord willing, the producer, maybe <laughs> you can have some sway with her, will uh, let us come back and do a part two. I hope so. I hope so. Are we running? Are we out of time? We're, We're getting out. We got about a minute left. Oh, okay. Um, you got something that you want to ask? <laughs> go ahead. Well, I, you know, I do believe, because I think Romans talks about the, the regathering of Israel. I do believe there will be a revival where many Jews will come to Christ. Um, I don't necessarily believe that um, it's after like the Christians are gone because I think there's, there's one body and, and we'll all go up together, Jew, Gentile. But I do believe that. I do believe at the time of the end, yeah. there will be a great revival. Many Jews will own their Savior again. They'll look upon the, the, he who they pierced and they'll weep. That's right. You know, That's as one right. weeps for his own, you know, his firstborn son. And so I think, you know, God's going to do that. He's going to bring a bring, uh, revival in Israel. And I'd love to live to see that. Well, one of the things I know that we definitely agree on, we agree that there's only one way to Jesus Christ. Amen. And we both are in agreement that we believe the Bible is an inspired mm -hmm. word. And even though we might interpret it differently on mm -hmm. certain things, mm -hmm. one thing that is foundational uh, is the way to Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that we agree upon that. Amen. And I, I can tell people all the time, I would have you in my pulpit any day well, of the week. And uh, you are such a that. blessing. Well, I, I love you, brother, and I love the, just the way in which our friendship, we're allowed to uh, just encourage one another in the Lord. And you really challenged me, your love of God, your boldness for Christ. And, uh, you know, you've been in my church and yeah, you got people to we applaud. Have story. We you have got people story to applaud, that which is, I mean, that, that alone, you know, almost made me cease uh, being a cessationist at that point. Is that a miracle? No, no, no. Uh, but, uh, but it was great. It was great having you and uh, you and your wife, Tiff. I mean, I, I call you two the hardest working people in show business because oh, you've got like... You. 15 irons in the fire at all times. And, you know, you really challenged me and you really pushed me. And I appreciate that. I thank God for you, brother. No doubt. Appreciate it. Well, he's going to be with us in just a minute because we're going to bring Angela back on the set. So stay tuned. We've got a little bit more before we wrap up on Scripture Faith. When you give to Cornerstone Television this month, we'll send you Encouraging Words for a Discouraging World by Dr. Jeremiah. Filled with encouraging and inspiring words, Dr. Jeremiah helps you navigate the difficulties of daily life with faith, courage, and resilience. He shares practical insights and timeless wisdom from the Bible that will help you find hope, comfort, and strength even in the darkest of times. This book includes biblical examples of hope that will inspire you during challenging seasons, inspiring teachings on how to claim victory even in the hardest of times, practical wisdom for holding God's promises in your heart. Whatever hardship you're facing, encouraging words for a discouraging world will help you find perspective, hope, and a renewed sense of purpose. Request your copy today as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... We need people that have become disciples and now they're able to disciple someone else and not just go to week after week after week, get ministered to. After a certain period of time, there needs to be a turnaround. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Earth has a unique natural satellite and it benefits life on our planet. According to secular scientists, our moon was formed in a random event billions of years ago, but there is strong evidence against this claim. Our moon is unusual in many ways and is well designed to support life on Earth and fulfill its stated purposes as described in the Bible. Our Design Moon with Spike Pissaris. This week on Origins. 
Well, we just enjoyed an awesome theological debate, but what I was most interested in, and this is Unscripted Faith, so we pulled Robin, our executive producer, wow. we pulled her from behind the camera and the scenes and asked her to join us to share her side of the story of how her and Dr. Ray met. You know this is a miracle, right? It is. Two, miracles. two miracles. No more two sensations. Miracles. That's two in because, one day. Because, like, this does not happen, but the fact that he misrepresents this story just gets me every time. Yes, I did break the pots, but it was only because they were too heavy for me. It wasn't because I was awestruck by him. I like, the shoulders, he tends the arms. to bleed the hair at the time. There was lots oh, of hair at the time. Red hair blowing. I mean, it was, it was amazing. But, you know, I just wanted to correct the error. Can, can I add just one little thing? <laughs> Every week she did that for years. Only one time did she drop them the time she saw me. Well, they were never too heavy any other time. <laughs> never bumped her arm any other time. Just saying. Now maybe we could bring Larry up sometime. Now, Larry yeah. is upstairs in well, the... Well, actually, uh, Larry's on vacation, so we oh, can't. So the Lord, so, that would have been three know, miracles. That's right. <laughs> and that would have been. <laughs> Did you guys start dating shortly after that incident, though? Um, it wasn't too long. I was here a couple of months. I didn't have a driver's license. So I had people had to drive me, so different ones did. I had to, a couple of different girls would drive me home once in a while. Notice girls, a couple of yeah, right. different girls. Oh. <laughs> And uh, so some things don't change. So <laughs> one time, um, you know, I'm talking to Robin on the set, you know, and, and just the way she talks and she was just so uh, just enlivened and her, you know, she had just she just is just yeah. a wonderful conversationist. And I'm looking at her and it just clicked in my mind. I want to be more than friends with this girl. And so I asked her out not long after that. Um, now, she thought we were just going to do what we normally did. You know, we're going to eat somewhere and go. And it was just a friend thing. But I was asking her on a date. And so at the end of the night we're in my driveway or my parents driveway i still lived at home and um and she's ready for me to get out of the car and i looked at her and i said can i kiss you and um she said no <laughs> she that's, <did>. right. <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right that, that's the real that's the real one <laughs> And I thought, okay, you know, I tried. I mean, I'm a, you know, was really, she was the first Christian girl I dated, and that's why, you know, I was trying to and, and ask her to kiss me. I thought this was the proper thing to do. And so I thought, well, she's not interested. You know, I misread her. And um, so I went uh, the next day, and Larry James and some of the other ones are like, oh, Robin, you know, she, she, you just caught her off guard. You know, she is interested. And so I remember I thought. The whole I, station was invested. Yeah. <laughs> so I sent her some flowers and I said, I still want that kiss. But we were in telethon, which at the time was two weeks, like all day long. So we couldn't go out again for like another two weeks. So I, I got her some flowers, said I still want that kiss. And then eventually went out. And oh. Eventually I got it. That's so wonderful. I had to work. I had to work. And like little known fact, he proposed to me on Dina Mary. Remember the old yeah. show, wow. Dina Mary? Oh, like, on here? He on, yeah, to, on television. television program. Yeah. I remember Olene, you know, said, what, what do we do if she says no? And, and Paul said, well, stop and edit. <laughs> well, listen, we so enjoyed you guys. Thank you, Robin, yes, for coming up. This is yes. totally unscripted today. <laughs> uh, we so appreciate you guys. And ladies and gentlemen, this is as much unscripted as you could possibly be. And we are making love connections here. And God has a plan for your life. God bless you and have a wonderful Cornerstone day. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.